India, China, or US? Who is leading this era of space race? To answer this, let's rewind to the 1950s. Back in the 50s and 60s, the word space race actually referred to the competition between the United States and the Soviet Union. This had to do with achieving significant milestones in space exploration. This was the time when the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 1, that was the first artificial satellite that was ever launched into Earth orbit. This event marked the beginning of space race and it created an urgency in the United States to catch up with space exploration. We propose to accelerate the development of the appropriate lunar spacecraft. In 1961, the Soviet Union achieved yet another milestone by launching Yuri Gagarin into space aboard the Vostok 1. This made him the first ever human to enter Earth orbit. In the next eight years, the United States made a giant leap by landing astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin on the moon, with Armstrong becoming the first person to walk on the moon. These were monumental achievements for humanity, and no doubts about that. But beyond that, the space race also led to significant achievements in science and technology, and played a crucial role in developing satellite communication, environmental monitoring, and aided the understanding of our planet and origin. The term space race is now used to describe the competitive efforts by both countries and private companies to explore space, but more so in the context of putting humans back on the moon and then on Mars and beyond, as well as development of new technologies, including autonomous vehicles, and of course, commercialization of space travel, opening up space for everyone. So in some sense, the next space race is not just about who reaches a new world first, and who is going to set the course for the future of humanity. From colonizing Mars to then mining asteroid resources, the goals were as diverse as they are ambitious. Remember when you watched The Martian and thought it was just a movie when Matt Damon grew potatoes to last a year and a half on Mars all by himself? They grew even better than I expected. What seemed like science fiction just eight years ago might soon be reality. And this hasn't happened overnight. In the past few years, we've witnessed groundbreaking missions that have paved the way for sustained presence of humanity in space. Let's take a quick world tour to see who's leading in what areas. First is the United States. NASA's Mars program has been hugely successful with both landers and rovers on the Martian surface for a few decades now. And this includes a series of missions, including the Mars Exploration Rovers, Spirit and Opportunity, that explored the Martian surface, making significant discoveries about water on Mars. Then came the Phoenix Mars Lander that studied for the potential of habitability in the Martian Arctic's ice-rich soil. And we all know about Curiosity rover's accomplishment. Curiosity has been exploring Gale Crater on Mars for over a decade now, investigating the planet's climate and geology and assessing whether the selected field inside the crater has ever had environmental conditions that are favorable for microbial life. Since then, NASA also landed the InSight lander to study the deep interiors of Mars in an attempt to study how celestial bodies with rocky surfaces, including Earth and Moon, were actually formed. And then came the mighty Perseverance rover mission. And yes, this is the mission that I'm working on. And together, we're investigating habitability on Mars, seeking signs for past microbial life, collecting and caching Martian rock samples to bring back to Earth at a later time so we can study them in detail to look for signs of past life. We're also preparing for future human exploration missions by producing oxygen from Martian carbon dioxide atmosphere and demonstrating technology that could both provide breathable air and rocket propellant for future human missions. The next country in the race is China. China's lunar exploration mission called Shanghi is a series of missions that are part of the China National Space Administration CNSA's ambitious plan for the robotic exploration of Moon. Starting in 2007, China has connected a series of exploration missions mapping the surface of the Moon. In 2013, their first lunar rover, U-2, made a soft landing on the moon, making China the third country to ever land on the moon. This also marked China's first touchdown on an extraterrestrial body. And then in early 2019, China launched another lander that achieved the first ever soft landing on the far side of the moon. It deployed the U-2-2 rover to explore the lunar surface and study its mineral composition and structure. And then in 2020, China successfully collected and sent back 3.8 pounds of lunar soil back to Earth, making it the first mission to bring back lunar soil ever since Soviet Union's Lunar 24 mission in 1976. We've talked about these tremendous achievements, but the space story just isn't complete without talking about India. ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization, has become a key player in the new space race by demonstrating remarkable achievements at a fraction of the budget compared to the other space agency. India also holds the record for the highest number of launches in a single mission. In total, ISRO has so far launched 432 satellites for 34 countries, with its PSLV, the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, and GSLV, the Geosynchronous launch vehicle families. This includes a mix of Indian and foreign satellites, 
for a wide range of applications, including satellite communication, environmental monitoring, and scientific research. ISRO's PSLV is particularly highly regarded for its versatility and reliability, having launched satellites into multiple orbits on a single mission. While the GSLV and its variants, the GSLV Mark III, are used to launch heavier payloads into the geosynchronous transfer orbit, that's GTO, and LEO, that's the low Earth orbit. And India is not just launching payloads for other countries alone. One of their major accomplishments is the Mars Orbiter mission, or the Mangalyan, India's first ever interplanetary mission undertaken by ISRO. Mangalyan was successful in reaching Mars orbit in 2014, making India the first ever country to ever do so in its very first attempt and also the first Asian country to ever reach Martian orbit. And I'll explain in another video why it's so hard to get to Mars. The Mars Orbiter mission was initially expected to have a lifespan of just six months, but it's far exceeded the expectation, providing valuable data and continues to contribute to the global understanding of habitability on Mars. The total cost of the mission was just 74 million US dollars, and no, I'm not missing a zero there. And you've all heard about the recent Chandrayaan-3, the third mission in the Chandrayaan series of lunar exploration missions by ISRO. With Chandrayaan-3, India became the fourth country to successfully land on the moon after the Soviet Union, the US, and China. The spacecraft also became the first lander to touch down near the lunar south pole. It consisted of a Vikram lander and a Pragyan lunar rover, as well as a propulsion module that carried the spacecraft into the lunar orbit. ISRO has perfected the art of making these missions at a tenth of the cost as other agencies. And as we move towards establishing a sustained presence of humans in space, cost as well as return on investment become extremely important in deciding who's leading the space race. So now we have the US, China, and India. Now guess who the fourth contender is. If you said Japan, you guessed it right. Japan's lunar lander mission, called as SLIM, Smart Lander for Investigating Moon, by the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, is designed to demonstrate precise lunar landing technology with a high level of landing accuracy that uses the landing ellipse to just 100 meters, which is much smaller than the previous missions. This precision is crucial for future lunar exploration missions that may target specific sites of interest, especially near lunar resources or areas of significant interest. In 2024, SLIM landed on target, deploying two rovers. While the probe initially landed on its nose and ended up running out of battery, a few days later, with change in conditions on the moon, the battery was able to get recharged, allowing it to resume operations. The two rovers, the Lunar Excursion Vehicle 1, which operates with a hopping mechanism, and Lunar Excursion Vehicle 2, that can crawl across the harsh lunar surface, swinging from side to side, both of them operated successfully. And if you thought these were all the contenders, you were absolutely wrong. We now have the private companies vying for a spot in the space race. The company leading the charge here, of course, is SpaceX. What? Holy smokes, man. The Crew Dragon spacecraft that was developed by SpaceX is a crucial part of NASA's commercial crew program designed to transport astronauts to and from the International Space Station. The development of Crew Dragon represents a remarkable milestone, especially in commercial spaceflight, marking the return of human spaceflight launches from the U.S. soil for the first time since the space shuttle program was retired in 2011. The first operational flight of the Crew Dragon spacecraft was completed in November 2020, launching four astronauts to the ISS on a six-month mission. There have been 13 crew flights to the ISS since then. And what's more, SpaceX has also partnered with Axiom Space and launched private astronauts to the ISS. SpaceX has launched thousands of satellites as part of its Starlink project, aiming to provide high-speed internet access across the globe, including in remote and underserved areas. SpaceX has continued to launch with Falcon Heavy, one of the most powerful operational rockets in the world, capable of launching large payloads into orbit, including missions to Moon and Mars. The list is long. SpaceX has launched a huge number of missions for environmental monitoring, Earth observation, scientific research, national security, partnering with several government agencies, and international organizations. Do you think SpaceX is leading the next space race? Well, hold on a bit. There are a few more contenders. So there are still heroes in this world. Hello, who am I speaking to? Blue Origin is another key player in the space race today that was founded by Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon. Blue Origin has successfully developed and launched the reusable rocket New Shepard and conducted several suborbital flights, offering passengers a few minutes of weightlessness and epic views of the Earth from the edge of space. And that's not all. The last company to make to the list is Intuitive Machines. I'm sure you've all heard in 2024, Intuitive Machines became the first private company to land its Nova C lunar lander on the moon. With this soft landing, Intuitive Machines took the US back to the moon for the first time 
since 1972. This lander is part of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services Initiative called the CLIPS, which involves partnering with private companies in delivering cargo services to the moon and also to support scientific research and exploration activities. The next decade promises even more ambitious endeavors. For example, NASA's Artemis mission aims to return humans back to the moon but this time to stay. The Artemis program is an international human and robotic spaceflight program initiated by NASA in collaboration with ESA, JAXA, and CSA. The program is seen as the next big step in human space exploration and serves as a critical component of broader plans to explore Mars and beyond. Beyond the initial missions, the Artemis program aims to establish a sustained presence of humans on the moon by the end of the decade. And this includes the development of lunar infrastructure such as the Gateway, a space station in lunar orbit that will serve as a multi-purpose outpost supporting long-term exploration of the moon and as a staging post for Mars and beyond. SpaceX has made significant progress in developing its next generation fully reusable launch vehicle called the Starship. Starship is central to SpaceX's ambitious plan for deep space exploration, including NASA's Artemis program to the moon, Mars, and beyond. This is part of the grand vision of SpaceX to establish a human settlement on Mars. All of these achievements sound amazing, but the journey to the stars present humongous challenges, both technical and ethical. Technologically, we're tasked with overcoming the hurdles of long-term space travel, such as developing advanced propulsion system, ensuring reliable life support, and mitigating the health effects of microgravity. Ethically, we face questions about planetary protection, the fair use of space resources, and the governance of extraterrestrial colonies. These challenges not only demand technological innovation, but also careful ethical consideration to ensure all humans benefit from space exploration equitably, and we preserve the integrity of these celestial environments. So did you make up your mind on who's leading the space race? yet? What if I tell you that the next space race is not going to be between countries or between private companies? The next space race is going to be marked by tremendous international collaboration. While the International Space Station continues to be a beacon of global partnership, multiple agencies and countries are coming together for huge missions such as the Mars Sample Return Mission, the Lunar Gateway, and the Artemis Program that will all showcase what we can achieve together. And NASA has established the Artemis Accords in support of the Artemis programs. This is a set of principles that are designed to guide lunar exploration cooperation among nations. The Artemis Accords has been signed by 36 different countries across the globe. It emphasizes peaceful exploration, transparency, interoperability, emergency assistance, and help. Imagine if one country has crew stuck on the moon, we would hope and want the other countries to help. Collectively, the goal is to establish norms so we can preserve these environments. Have I convinced you yet that the narrative of competition that once defined the space race has now evolved into a vision of unity and collaboration. The new era is not just about being the first in achieving milestones in space, but about joining forces across the world to address some of the most challenging and inspiring goals that humanity has ever set. This era is going to be characterized by a shared pursuit of scientific discovery, technological achievement, and exploration of the unknown. All of this upheld by the profound understanding that the future of space exploration is actually connected with the future of our planet. As we push the boundaries of what's possible, the next space race as we know it, it's defining the future of humanity. It's a journey of discovery, innovation, and hope. Are you ready to be a part of it? If you want to see more out of this world space and tech content, don't forget to share and subscribe to this channel. You can follow me on Instagram for more latest updates.